a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Black Klansman Black Klansman is a 2018 American biographical comedy drama film directed by Spike Lee and written by Charlie Wachtel, David Rabinowitz, Kevin Wilmot, and Lee, based on the 2014 memoir Black Klansman by Ron Stallworth. The film stars John David Washington as Stallworth, along with Adam Driver, Laura Harrier, and Topher Grace. Set in 1970s Colorado Springs, the plot follows the first African-American detective in the Colorado Springs Police Department, who sets out to infiltrate and expose the local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. The film is produced by Lee, Raymond Mansfield, Sean Reddick, Sean McKittrick, Jason Blum, and Jordan Peele. Reddick purchased the film rights to the book in 2015, and Lee signed on as director in September 2017. Much of the cast joined the following month and filming began in New York State. Black Klansman premiered on May 14, 2018 at the Cannes Film Festival, where it competed for the Palme d'Or and won the Grand Prix. It was theatrically released in the United States on August 10, 2018, coinciding with the one-year anniversary of the white supremacist Unite the Right rally. The film received acclaim from critics, with many praising the performances and timely themes, as well as noting it as a return to form for Lee. Plot. In the early 1970s, Ron Stallworth is hired as the first black officer in the Colorado Springs, Colorado Police Department. Stallworth is initially assigned to work in the records room, where he faces racial slurs from his co-workers. Stallworth requests a transfer to go undercover, and is assigned to infiltrate a local rally at which national civil rights leader Kwame Tur is to give a speech. At the rally, Stallworth meets Patrice Dumas, the president of the Black Student Union at Colorado College. While taking Tur to his hotel, Patrice is stopped by patrolman Andy Landers, a corrupt, racist officer in Stallworth's precinct, who threatens Tur and sexually assaults Patrice. After the rally, Stallworth is reassigned to the intelligence division. While reading the paper, he finds an advertisement to join the Ku Klux Klan. Starworth calls and pretends to be a white man, and speaks with Walter Breachway, the president of the Colorado Springs chapter. Starworth recruits his Jewish co-worker, Flip Zimmerman, to act as him in order to meet the Ku Klux Klan members in person. Zimmerman attends a meeting and meets Walter, along with the more radicalized member Felix Kendrickson. Zimmerman also speaks with another member named Ivanhoe, who cryptically refers to an upcoming attack. Zimmerman and Stallworth continue to cultivate their relationship with the local clan chapter, calling clan headquarters in Louisiana to expedite his membership. Stallworth speaks with David Duke, the Grand Wizard, with whom he begins regular conversations on the phone. Kendrickson makes Zimmerman take a Jewish liar detector test at gunpoint, but Stallworth throws a rock through the Kendrickson family window to distract everyone. Stallworth begins dating Patrice but does not tell her that he is a police officer. After passing on information to the army said about active duty members, he learns from a meeting with an FBI agent that two of the chapter's members are military personnel stationed at NORAD headquarters. Duke visits Colorado Springs for Stallworth's induction into the Klan. Over the real Stallworth's protests, he is assigned to a protection detail for Duke. After Zimmerman, masquerading as Stallworth, is initiated, Felix's wife Connie leaves the ceremony to place a bomb at a civil rights rally. Starworth realizes her intentions and alerts local police officers. Acting on Felix's backup plan, Connie tries to plant the bomb in Patrice's mailbox. Finding that it will not fit, she leaves it under Patrice's car instead. Starworth tackles her as she tries to flee, but uniformed officers detain and beat him over his protests that he is working undercover. Felix, Ivanhoe, and bomb maker Walker arrive and park next to Patrice's car. They set off the bomb, not knowing where Connie had hidden it, and are killed in the explosion. Zimmerman arrives and frees Stallworth, and Connie is arrested, while celebrating the closed case that night. Stallworth wears a hidden microphone and tricks a drunken Landers into bragging about his assault on Patrice. With the confession on tape, Landers is arrested.
Police Chief Bridges congratulates the team for their successful operation, but orders them to end it and keep all details from the public. As he is packing up, Starworth receives one last call from Duke. Starworth reveals to Duke that he is a black man before hanging up. Later, Patrice and Starworth discuss their future together, only to be interrupted by a knock on the door. Through the window, they see a large flaming cross on a distant hillside surrounded by clan members. The film closes with footage from the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, including footage of the white supremacists. David Duke giving a speech to the attendees, counter-protesters, the car attack, and President Trump's statements after the events. The film ends with a memorial to Heather Heyer, the car attack victim, and an upside-down American flag, which fades to black and white. Production in July 2015 screenwriters slash co-producers Charlie Wachtel and David Rabinowitz discovered the book Black Klansman by Ron Stahlworth. They interviewed Stahlworth and wrote a spec screenplay. Then pitched the script to producers Sean Reddick and Ray Mansfield. They brought the property to QC Entertainment, which had co-produced the successful 2017 film Get Out. QC again teamed up with Jason Blum's company Bloomhouse Productions, and Jordan Peele's company Monkey Paw Productions, to produce the project. In September of that year, Spike Lee signed on as director, and John David Washington was in negotiations to star. The following month, Adam Driver, Laura Harrier, Topher Grace, and Corey Hawkins had joined the cast. In November, Paul Walter Hauser, Jasper Pakunen, and Ryan Eggold joined the cast, with Ashley Atkinson joining a month later. Filming began in October 2017. Osining, New York was one location used in October. Harry Belafonte appears in the film recounting the lynching of Jesse Washington. According to Lee, he commanded his crew on the day of filming Belafonte's scene to dress to the occasion in suits and dresses to honor Belafonte. Release on April 12, 2018, the film was selected to compete for the Palme d'Or at the 2018 Cannes Film Festival, where it premiered on May 14. It opened in the United States on August 10, 2018, which was chosen to coincide with the one-year anniversary of the Charlottesville Rally. Box Office Black Klansman has grossed $48.2 million in the United States and Canada and $35.1 million in other territories, for a total worldwide gross of $83.3 million, against a production budget of $15 million. In the United States and Canada, Black Klansman was released alongside Slender Man and The Meg, and was projected to gross around $10 million from 1,512 theaters in its opening weekend. It made $3.6 million on its first day. It went on to debut to $10.8 million, finishing fifth at the box office and marking Lee's best opening weekend since Inside Man in 2006. It made $7.4 million in its second weekend, and $5.3 million in its third, finishing seventh and eighth, respectively. Critical Response On review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 95% based on 310 reviews, with an average rating of 8. 3 tenths. The website's critical consensus reads, Black Klansman uses history to offer bitingly trenchant commentary on current events, and brings out some of Spike Lee's hardest-hitting work in decades along the way. On Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating to reviews, the film has a weighted average score of 83 out of 100 based on 56 critics, indicating universal acclaim. Audiences polled by Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of A, on an A plus to F scale, while post-track reported film goers gave it an 85% positive score and a 67% definite recommend. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian gave the film 3 out of 5 stars, writing, it's an entertaining spectacle. But the brilliant tonal balance in something like Jordan Peele's satire Get Out leaves this looking a little exposed. Yet it responds fiercely, contemptuously to the crassness at the heart of the Trump regime, and gleefully pays it back in its own coin. 
For IndieWire, David Ehrlich gave the film a grade of B+, and wrote that it is far more frightening than it is funny, and packages such weighty and ultra-relevant subjects into the form of a wildly uneven, but consistently entertaining night at the movies. A. O. Scott, writing for the New York Times, saw the film as both political and provocative in opening up discussion on timely subject matter following Charlottesville. He stated, committed anti-racists can sit quietly or laugh politely when hateful things are said. Epithets uttered in irony can be repeated in earnest. The most shocking thing about Flip's imposture is how easy it seems, how natural he looks and sounds. This unnerving authenticity is partly testament to Mr. Driver's ability to tuck one performance inside another, but it also testifies to a stark and discomforting truth. Maybe not everyone who is white is a racist, but racism is what makes us white. Don't sleep on this movie. In his review for Vulture, David Edelstein found the film to be a potent antidote for previous films which Lee sees as unduly supportive of the racist viewpoint in the past, such as Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. He stated, Lee himself has a propagandist streak, and he knows nothing ever sold the message of white emasculation and the existential necessity of keeping blacks down as well as Griffith's 1915 film. It revived the Klan and, insult to injury, is still reckoned a landmark of narrative filmmaking. If there were no other reason to make black Klansmen, this one would be good enough. Filmmaker and communist activist Boots Riley, whose feature film debut Sorry to Bother You also premiered in 2018, took to Twitter on August 17 to criticize the film for its political perspective. While Riley acknowledged the craft's work of the film as masterful and cited Lee as a major influence on his own work, he felt that the film was dishonestly marketed as a true story and criticized its attempts to make a cop the protagonist in the fight against racist oppression when black Americans face structural racism from the police on a day-to-day -day basis. In particular, Riley argued that the film glossed over Stallworth's time spent working for COINTELPRO to sabotage a black radical organization and objected to the film's choices to portray Stallworth's partner as Jewish and to fictionalize a bombing to make the police seem like heroes. Lee responded in an interview with The Times on August 24, stating that while his films have been very critical of the police, I'm never going to say that all police are corrupt, that all police hate people of color. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?